Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Stephanie, for that intro. And thank you, Art Basel, for allowing us to have this very pertinent and important conversation at the fair. So I thought I could begin the panel with some larger framing questions to the artists. Um, and perhaps, depending on um, everyone's own experience, they could think about um, how they would like to respond. So first question, uh, how does art act as a conduit to find creative ways of expressing the intense emotions associated with wellness and illness? Start. <laughs> How about now? Much better, right? Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Maybe you came from far away. Maybe you're quite jet lagged. So I congratulate you for trying to go to a talk at the end of the day. So um, yeah, so my name's Christine, and my work is influenced by positive psychology. Um, I actually really like positive psychology because it's all about affirming that the positive is just as real as the negative. So in, the, in making work that is celebratory, I do try to um, just acknowledge that there are extremes of, of joy and delight and resilience and power, as well as um, you know when we talk about mental illness and those extremes of, um, on the other side too. So that is just something I would like to acknowledge. But there's lots of us on the panel, so. Hello. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Indu Antony. Um, and, and thank you for that question. I think it is quite relevant um, to also acknowledge art to um, help with mental health, not look at it from, and art kind of gives that space for people to express themselves. Um, also coming from a very personal space, I think, art gives a lot of freedom. And I think um, that's very important to acknowledge. Yeah. Hi, thank you for being here. Thank you for your question. Of course, I'm here to talk about my brother. He has schizophrenia. He was diagnosed at 15. He started painting at 17 and never stopped. Uh, he had many struggles in his life, his personal issue, his medication side effect from long-term medication. He had a lot of paranoia that resulted in him being very secretive about his techniques. And he um, did not uh, social well, um, difficult to make friends. And also, um, he could not communicate. So um, his painting, his art, is for him to express his inner feeling and to communicate, to express uh, what he wanted um, you know, to, for people to understand him. And um, it really appeared that his schizophrenic um, defined his life. But in fact, his art, it was his art that defined him and his reflection of life. It offered him hope, aspiration, and the possibility of what future can come. He said to himself that all his adult life, he struggled uh, with his with his schizophrenia, and but he remained determined to wait for a brighter future to come. In his paintings, he say, like um, those that were shown up on the screen, he said that the bright light that emerged from the apparent darkness um, reflect his personal experience and struggle. So he was really the happiest when he was painting. It kind of for that moment, it would bring him to a place where he could forget about his uh, struggles and um, to be in a very happy place. So even though that art was his life, one true love, but at the same time, in a way, it was his lifeline. That's how he was able to survive all these years. Thank you. Thank you. えっとですね。
そのとメンタルハルヘルスを考えた時にはその言いづらいことを、えー、話すとか。えー、怒りや悲しみ社会への不条理そういったものを抗議する拡声器のような場所として使えるのではないかなと思っています。Okay, thank you very much for joining with us today.、Uh, I think, you know, when it comes to the relationship between art and also the mental health, I think, you know, art can play,、uh, the, can become a tool like a bullhorn or like a loudspeaker, which you can actually say the things you, are, like, you have a hard time saying, or like you can actually express, you know, anger, sadness, and also injustice through this, like, you know, loudspeaker. えー、そしてですね、私もあの妹が統合失調症というあの幻聴や幻覚が見える病気がありまして、彼女と一緒に作った作品というものが私の初期の代表作になっています。So also like、uh, the my sister,、uh, she has suffered. I mean, she has been suffering from this schizophrenia, meaning like you know she has a visual and also auditory、uh, the hallucination. So I collaborated with her, and in like you know,、uh, the, I guess you know this initial、uh, the art piece that you know I developed with her became、uh, one of my、uh, best known、uh, the the work. そこでは私たち、私や家族が彼女が見える現状や幻覚を再現する映像を作りました。So, in this, like、uh, the work or the piece we developed,、uh, myself and my family, we actually like you know, replay or reenact all those like you know, hallucinations my sister suffered or like it experienced. So, I guess. So, I guess through this like, kind of artwork and an art pieces, of course, you know, we can actually like, you know, talk to individuals and then also we can experience you know, their,、uh, you know, what they're going through and then also we can be in touch with their emotions. So, my next question、uh, is really related to the role of the artist in. The wellness sphere today. What can artists do in assisting us in understanding the importance of well being, mental health? It's becoming imminently clear that science cannot do the work alone.、Uh, so perhaps this next question kind of addresses that.、Uh, to all panelists that would like to answer, How would you articulate these ideas of mental health and wellness in your own artistic practices? And how would that translate to your everyday life? Well, I would like to point out that of the Mindscapes artists, a lot of the projects have been community oriented or relational.、Um, Indus and And Yuki's work has been working with women in particular. In my work, I've been leading workshops in different cities in New York, Berlin, Bangalore, and Karuizawa.、Um, I think as social practitioners, we believe in holding space. And I think that、um, is inviting other people to participate in self reflection, in conversation, in connection. So, in many ways,、um, I think we are all. Working in a way where we understand that art making is a pathway for people to、um, work towards self reflection and connecting with other people and、um, just making more space for people to be vulnerable and to share things that they might not otherwise share if you just ask them in an interview, perhaps.、Mm -hmm. Yeah.、Um, so I run a space called Namakate, which is a space primarily. As a leisure space for women、um, back home in India. And it's quite interesting because leisure was considered、um, a luxury because you have to constantly be productive, you have to constantly do something. But to then integrate leisure into a space was so new.、Um, so we were thinking of what are the activities that we do there because everybody was like, we should do something. And I remember we, we started stitching stories. I said, You have stories, why don't you stitch them? And as you can see in the slideshows, you see these stories. And initially, it was just 
um, I think 10 to 15 women said, okay, we share. But the space started feeling like a safe space where women felt so open to be able to share these stories to today. We have 546 stories that the women have all come together to share. So the idea of, again, holding that space, um, at the same time feeling quite vulnerable towards each other and also saying that you're not alone um, helped a lot with the kind of work that we are doing. Um, yeah, so I think having a space like that um, really um, makes us also more understand um, of uh, you know the idea of mental health and also to integrate uh, free time uh, to acknowledge what's going on with ourselves. Yeah. Well, for Wesley, um, mostly his art was all about himself. He did not advocate, um, didn't have a particular agenda. It's really about expressing himself, and um, we have a. And, and it was a form of healing for him. But what is interesting is that his art is actually healing others. He's doing that healing work now. And um, usually, usually the comments I get from people who wanted to apply his painting or looking at his painting, um, they see that it's really, you know, it, it really gives them a sense of calm, it calms them down, it takes their stress away. And people could even um, said that it really could bring bring him into the painting, meditating with Wesley. And um, in a lot of cases, it's also offer people hope. Um, I actually has a print of his painting. I usually don't do print, but my goddaughter is a clinical social worker, and she asked me for, for a piece of work uh, for her clients, her patients. And so I pick one um, with this in mind, and I'm constantly getting feedback, and really it has offered her patients a lot of hope, that particular painting. So quickly share two very unusual reaction. Uh, one collector wanted to buy two pieces, very similar uh, paintings, splashing painting. And I was curious about why. And turns out that he has this reoccurring dream, a place, a world, that a happy place that he wanted to be, but he only can get to it through his dream. And somehow, these two paintings that he saw was his dreamscape. It was his dream. And this is really quite powerful. So he wanted the painting to be in his living room, in his home, so he can visit this world um, during his awake hours. And uh, another friend, is actually this one is a friend, um, somebody I know who's not an art collector. He came to see uh, Wesley's exhibition. And this one painting really had a big effect on her. She always had a fear about dying because she didn't know where she would go after death. And she didn't understand what heaven meant, what, what, what it meant. She didn't understand what it meant to be in God's embrace. And she really searched um, different religions and she couldn't get an answer. But when she saw this one painting, she knew instantly what heaven was like, where she would go after death. And that fear, since then, she, had, she doesn't have the fear about dying. So these are very impactful reaction, in, you know, um, uh, from his painting. So the more I think about it, the more I think how powerful art can be. And it is really important, and I'm thankful for, you know, Welcome Trust to have a program like Mindscape, my fellow panelists, the work they do, uh, to bring this on a global platform and at Basel to have this platform to openly, we can talk about mental health and to spread the word, to let people really know that art can be really powerful too. And we really need to get that message out there, I think. えっと、インドさんがおっしゃるように日本でもあの今回のマインドスケープスのようなプロジェクトは今までに行われたことがありません。so just like you know, the panelists said, uh, the Dessa Mindscape was something we never had in Japanese market. So therefore, this was the first time, and it was a very, very important experience uh, to myself. メリサさんの質問に対する答えですが、私にとって政策と自分の生活の経験というのは全く分離しているものではなくて。
なんか入り混じっている、相互的な関係にあるものです。So, like, a to like indirectly answer to your question, I guess you know, my actually artwork, you know, my career and you know, also my personal life, they are not separated at all. It's more like, you know, line, be- line between them is like blurred, more like integrated. あの今回のマインドスケープスのプロジェクトでは私はあのドメスティックバイオレンス DV についての作品あドメスティックバイオレンス DV についての作品を作ったんですけれどもこれは私自身がパートナーからの暴力に、えー、と悩んで苦しんでいたことが、えー、きっかけになっています。So,、uh, this time around, you know, for this like a mind space,、uh, the my piece or the my work was like, you know, theme was domestic violence.、Uh, this is actually based on my real experience. You know, I was suffering from like this abusive、uh, the behaviors from my intimate partner. So, that was the basis of my work. ま、And then also throughout that process, I, have, I, mean, I managed to interview quite few people, including those who abuse and those who are being abused, and also those like, you know, people who help those victims. And then, of course, you know, through that process, I learned so many things. But it was almost like a big relief that, you know, in my case, was not special. Many people actually suffer from like, a similar problems. 4ヶ月間あの日本の森美術館で展示をしたんですけれどもその間に1850通の観客からのコメントが集まりました。So, actually, this exhibition、uh, lasted, like,、uh, they continued for four months in、uh, Mori Museum in Tokyo. And、uh, during that time,、uh, actually,、uh, the audience or the visitors left you know, messages. And the number of the messages was like you know, 100,、uh, 1,850 messages. まあ、私の個人的な経験上必要だったプロジェクトではあるんですが実際に展示をしてみるとこれほどまでに多くの人がそうしたプロジェクトを必要としているのかとちょっと驚きました。And then, of course, you know, the initial origin of this project you know, was the basis of my experience. But you know, after receiving the comments and reaction from the audience,、uh, I was surprised. You know, we, I mean, I had no idea so many people actually needed、uh, this kind of topic, so this kind of exhibition. DV というものは美術史とかアートの歴史の中ではそんなにメジャーなテーマではないと思うんですけれども。あの個人の経験に目を向けるとこれほどまでに人々が見ようと見たいとか必要としているテーマというものが掘り起こされるという気づきがありました。So, domestic violence, when you look at this, like, you know, the theme of the art, or like, even when you look at the you know, art history, this hasn't been really popular or the major theme or the topics. But having said that,、uh, when I look at this, like, you know, reactions,、uh, I realize that you know, this kind of like, a theme was very much needed you know, in demand you know, from like, so many different people. So,、uh I realize maybe we, you know, we keep talking about mindscapes. Maybe I can just do a really quick couple sentences about、um, what that is.、Um, and I know Stephanie briefly explained, but it is, of course, organized by Welcome Trust. And it is a major international cultural program that aims to expand how we understand, address, and talk about mental health through art. Um, and looking at different cities,、um, what Mindscapes does is it partners around the world to look at mental health from different perspectives because, of course, every city, every country、uh, talks, thinks,、um, and approaches mental health very differently.、Um, and, of course,、um, the Welcome Trust artists.、Um, Are working on this project with Yuki, of course,、um, who is documenting stories of those who are dealing with domestic violence、um, and Indu,、uh, addressing the, t- the taboo that surrounds mental health in India,、uh, 
um, and creating a space where people can come together to care for themselves and each other. Um, and Christine Wan Yap, uh, who is working in multiple cities to explore the role of civic spaces um, and how social infrastructure can have a positive impact on mental health. Um, and of course, um, Cynthia, who's here for Wesley Thompson, not a part of uh, Mindscapes, but Wesley Thompson, a major ink painter. Um, so, you know, this idea of how artists understand the brain, the body, and environment, um, it's very interesting because it is very different from this idea of how a physician would diagnose and work with improving mental health. Um, this next question is about how, how can, how artists understand things like the body and science and environment, how can that help us with providing um, a better understanding of mental health and wellness? Does it, we don't have to do it in a line. Yeah, <laughs> it can be anyone can speak as they wish. Yeah. <laughs> I could go. <laughs> sure. Um, so I think um, also being a doctor, I think that, that this whole idea of having a scientific gaze versus an artist gaze, you know, so there's this scientific gaze gives a very rigid idea of like, yeah, you, this is what you are diagnosed with and this is what the framework with which one falls into uh, versus, versus I think art kind of gives a very broad spectrum as to not really there to have that particular gaze, but at the same time um, have a freedom to express oneself. So when I run the space, um, it's so interesting to see different kinds of people keep coming to that space. Um, during the pandemic, um, what had happened was there was a large... Is that a fire alarm? I think that means we got to get out of here. <laughs> right? I... Well, we can see. <laughs> I think that's a fire alarm. Yeah. Might be, it could false. be a false alarm. Sorry, Mom. Turn it off. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. All good. I think. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys need some breathing exercise so you can de-stress? Because <laughs> we have a bunch of artists who work in mental health up here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> that's interesting. Um, so yeah, I think while running the space, it was also quite interesting to see how women were using this space um, as, a, as a space to step away from domestic violence because homes became quite unsafe for them. So Namakate, the space uh, that you see on the screen, so have been this like safe space for them to kind of step away from. Um, and um, it was quite interesting how each of them would have multiple stories and then we would have uh, gossip sessions every Wednesday to just sit around and just talk. And, and all these, so it was not, uh, I didn't approach the project saying, this is a mental health pro project, you know. I would just say this is a space for us to just sit and just talk. And it was also coming from my personal need of um, being, you know, living alone in a city for the longest period of having this extended family uh, for me. So I would every day go, we will have, you know, chai and we would talk about things. So it became the space, um, the gloves that you see on the screen. It's also interesting how um, they were like, oh, we, are we would hold you, you know, as a community, we are here to also hold you when you have, you are going through, uh, you know, your own troubles. So in that way, it was a two-way street. It was not just a project that was just for them, but also, you know, in a way for me to kind of help myself. So I feel um, one cannot really, like Yuki correctly said, it's, it's a very blurred line and one cannot really separate um, oneself from projects like these, yeah. Actually, Indu, can you talk about the little hand thing? Yeah. That, there's a photo in the slides, and it, I think it's so powerful for talking about the importance of the body. Yeah, um, so one of the things that um, I personally was going through during the COVID was the idea of no touch, the idea of being alone, 
um, in my room and not having people around me and feeling extremely isolated. And I kept thinking that if somebody had just hugged me, I would have felt so much better and I would have felt kind of healed in a way, you know. Um, and that's when um, I started thinking about the concept of, um, you know, the gloves and, and the hand thing, this hand sculpture that I made, which is primarily for people to put their hand into. And the women contributed uh, small pieces of their clothes to say that there is a community holding you. So for me, uh, making these hands, um, I mean, I have few at home and I wear them when I'm feeling down. Uh, but the fact that, you know, there was this moment where they said, we are here too, and they lend their hand literally to kind of help me as well. Yeah. I, I have to add, because Indu brought a glove in the green room <laughs> to pass around, and I put my hand in it, grabbing it, I really felt like, it's a hug. It's so comforting, the feeling. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> so um, for Wes, I, I don't think I can really answer this question with Wesley. But, but, but he did paint with his body. So he painted with his finger, fingernails and hands. So I think he you know, um, has to understand the limitations. Uh, he also, he had aches and pains uh, by that point. So it was really not easy for him to move around. But, but because he painted, it was like a body work. Um, he's able to, and there's no brush, nothing in between him and the creation. So he's able to really um, pull in his energy and his raw emotion into the painting and these paintings are, are extremely uh, powerful and um, you know uh, the movement and everything and people really do respond to it あの、こう、あ、話をあの今日の話もそうですし、えっと今までに今日話しているアーティストの話を聞き聞きながら思ったことがありまして、やはりメンハタルヘルスについて話していく考えていくためには安心や安全というあの言葉がとても大切だと思うんですが。So what I realize is that you know just like listening to what all the panelists said today, also like you know you what you've said in the past. Of course, you know I had a chance to listen to them, and I. You know, I realized that you know, whenever you need to, like you can, you want to discuss about the mental health, you need a safe space. You know, safety is a key. あの、やはりインドさんのプロジェクトと私のプロジェクトを比較する検討するのはすごく興味深いなと思いながら聞いていて、あの、私のプロジェクトの場合、顔と顔。を合わせて観客たちが接触することは観客あの協力者たちが接触することはなくて匿名で自分のその情報が隠される状態だったからあ匿名で自分の情報が隠される状態だったからあそこまでこう雄弁に話すことができたんではないのかなというのがそれがま
、まあ、世代間のトラウマとかその人を一見しただけでは目に見えない傷とか痛みっていうものに対して科学では触れていけないところにまでその私たちのやり方アーティストのやり方ではあの触れていける可能性があるんではないかと思っています。And then also, like, you know, sometimes you see a person or people, like, you, know, you can't really see who they are or what they are in true sense because they, they, might, they might have a pain or they have scars, you know, that we cannot see. So those things cannot be touched or, like, you know, resolved or cured by, you know, science. But I guess, you know, art has a way to actually reach those invisible places. And I think what has been You know, really kind of prevalent throughout in a lot of the answers is this idea that space needs to be created or space needs to be held in order for one to begin talking, exploring,、uh, you know, more than exploring mental health, but kind of begin the process of healing.、Um, and, and that space is, I think, the most important and what is so important. Um, in all these artistic practices. So,、um, you know, we're all from different cultural backgrounds and all, we're all working from different cities. And a large part of this idea、um, or our understanding of mental health really kind of varies.、Um, so, this question is really about.、Um, Can each one of you share thoughts about understanding mental health from a local phenomenon?、Um, and how does that inform、um, the artistic practice? I can talk about、um, my projects, have been about belonging, and belonging works on lots of different levels. It's on an individual level as well as a social level. On the individual level, it's a feeling, and you can't design a feeling. You can design the conditions that create the feeling, but you can't design the feeling.、Um, so, I think for me, when we talk about locality,、um, I like to do projects that are hyper local because I'm really interested in、um, psychology and the emotional. And when I think about social stuff, it can be really overwhelming. So,、um, to go about trying to make systemic change is like, how can any one person do that? It's very scary and overwhelming. And it, it actually will lead, you, when you feel overwhelmed, you will go to, more towards like not doing anything rather than being active. So, when you feel a sense of agency, you're more likely to take action. So, that's where like breaking things down into hyper local. Um, spaces can make it easier to, to do something. And、um, I think、um, local communities, that's kind of an easier way to look at intersectionality. So、um, I live in San Francisco. It's similar to Hong Kong, where there's extreme wealth inequality and、um, resource scarcity.、Um, So, when you have conversations with people, I've been doing projects with the Chinese Culture Center in San Francisco.、Um, some of the people we work with are working class immigrants.、Uh, I kind of leave it up to them to talk about what they want to talk about. Maybe it's about family separation because of immigration policies, or maybe it's about being queer, or maybe it's about domestic violence.、Um, but I think when you have those spaces that are safe, For people to be vulnerable, where talking about mental health is destigmatized, where people who are involved in care professions, either as mothers or、uh, nurses or teachers, are able to think about what they need in terms of care. I think、um, that's an important thing to do, and then also letting them bring up the identities and the way systems impact them in personal ways、um, is, is kind of the potential of art in terms of those. Uh, local issues. Yeah.、Um, so, yeah, in, in my case, I think、um, running a center、um, in a very specific locality,、um, it's quite interesting because、um, A, the people in that area speak five to six languages. So, language becomes very important when one tries to have c o n v e r s a t i o n about mental health. Each Language identifies mental health in multiple different ways. So, language、um, is an underlying theme to how we address、uh, mental health in specific areas.、Um, also, locality wise,、um, the space that I run,、uh, 
um, there is a lot of scarcity of water, which is uh, again a, you know a local thing there. Which um, I remember while um, you know one of those days we were sitting and there was a lady who walked in and she said, you know, I'm, and she was just covered in blood and I was like, what happened? And she said, you know, I went through something. So I said, okay, come, let's wash the blood off. To her responding, saying, I'm just waiting for the water tanker to come. So, and I realized that was such a very uh, specific issue to that area, which um, water crisis is something um, very much also dependent on mental health. Um, so, yeah, look at, in, in terms of being hyper-local, this, this spaces um, have its own issues and how, um, how people react to the space as well. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> I think that's quite interesting. Uh, well, in Wesley's time, uh, he passed away in 2012 at age 54. Um, you know, still, all his life, I mean, is the mental health is still a, very, is a stigma. And really, there's not that much resource available. I think you have your psychiatrists and um, not really even therapists, you know, to, to talk. It's just uh, more like a doctor. And um, we don't have safe spaces like you talked about a lot nowadays. So, you know, um, and everybody just have to suffer on their own and figure out your own way what to do. And uh, with Wesley, he did figure out that he was lucky that he has the art, the art, um, his painting practice, um, he said, along with his uh, Zen Buddhism practice, was his way out because his problem could not, there's no solution could not be solved and he had to figure out a way and he really didn't have many people to talk to. There's really no resource. So I'm glad that, um, you know, we, we have a lot more resources and um, more safe space um, to bring more awareness and for uh, people to talk about this. あの、日本ではあの、先ほどこうしたプロジェクトなどは求められているっていうようなことを話したと思うんですが、一方で多分美術教育などの場ではそうしたプロジェクトを作れるあの、行えるアーティストを教えられる教員っていうのはすごく少
activities, not in central Tokyo, but in regional cities or rural area. And they are like, you know, always seeking for this kind of exhibitions or looking for this kind kind of exhibitions in their like, you know, local area. So I think, you know, what I can do is I can, like, you know, replicate this exhibition in like, you know, more like a rural like a, or like regional cities. So therefore, somehow we have to, I have to find a way to make it like an installation exhibition much easier and make it mobile so we can actually, like, and I would have a more opportunities to showcase my work in like in the different cities. And I think, um, also, this idea of language is so important. Um, and in particular, I was thinking about this Indu in your work and how there are multiple languages, but it's also this how one expresses, you know, concepts of mental health or what's called well or unwell in health, whether it's in Cantonese, whether it's in English. Um, whether it's in Japanese, it's, it kind of also makes visible the idea of the taboo in the way that it's expressed. And I think it's another way that art can transcend because the visual language is one that then becomes so much more universal in being able to express and also being able to affect people from all around the world. Um, so this is a timely question and I'm sure affects many artist practices, but in particular, um, you know, just this, I, I'm thinking about the pandemic and COVID-19. Um, so that is, of course, a, was a global, it, it is global, um, and it has affected artists from all around the world. But in particular, my interest is how it's affected um, the practices um, of the artistic practices here on stage. Yuki, do you want to go first this time? <laughs> oh, um, how has the COVID-19 um, affected um. your practice? Japanese-Japanese-Japanese-Japanese-Japanese-Japanese-Japanese-Japanese-Japanese-Japanese-Japanese-Japanese-Japanese-Japanese-Japanese-Japanese-Japanese-Japanese-Japanese-Japanese-
that needs to be eradicated or like we need to stop. But, you know, going back to your question about the COVID-19, I think, you know, there was a very serious like an issue, like maybe it's in particular in Japan, because when you look at the like, you know, general, the big hospital, there's like, you know, psychiatric, you know, word, but, you know, for those severe patient, uh, they are like locked up. So basically there's like circulation, uh, air ventilation is very poor to begin with. So whenever like there's like one COVID patient in the psychiatric ward, and actually there's like a huge cluster, you know, throughout the you know, hospital. And then that happened a lot in Japan. And then many people actually decided or avoid to like, you know, you know, acknowledge that phenomenon throughout the COVID. That's what I witnessed. And Cynthia, did you find kind of coming through the pandemic and seeing all these different um, mental health issues, isolation in the different countries, it's made you understand Wesley's work in a different way? Yes, yes, it really, it really did. Um, I have really have a lot, learned a lot learn a lot in the last few years and the, the fact that um, you know there have been a lot of the talks about mental health uh, now you know like like what um, you know through the work of Christine and you know so I, I'm quite familiar with Christine's work and um, so it really does help me have uh, more of an understanding and um, and even myself, kind of like, you know, going through the p pandemic and being shut in. Actually, I've been living a, like a hermit for like <laughs> more than three years, <laughs> up to recently even. So yeah, so I, you know, I, even with myself, I'm normally, normally a social person, but I really love being in my house, inside my house too much, yeah. So, um, you know, even I'm, I'm feeling, feeling it. So yes, it really does help me understand uh, being, you know, you, you go through ups and downs, a little depression. So yes, <laughs> it does help. Thank um, yeah, I remember during the COVID, um, uh, you know, primarily sitting home alone and not doing, not, not understanding what is going on. Um, I've been collecting very tiny objects from, you know, maybe the the first concert ticket that I went to, to, you know, small memorabilia that I've been collecting. So I started opening these boxes and just looking at them and just understanding that I did have a certain kind of life and then I needed those memories to kind of hold me to take me through this time. Uh, and I remember taking each of these objects and then stitching them and then, um, yeah, eventually I did um, kind of make a book out of it, but it was, it was something to just cope with what was happening around. Yeah. I am Chinese American making art about belonging in an age of rising anti-Asian hate in America. So the context provides me with more motivation to do what I do and more belief in the importance of what I do. So um, I think I might open it up for questions now, um, if there are any questions in the audience. Thank you so much for the talk um, and such an urgent uh, topic today. Um, I was just wondering if um, institutions and galleries are open to this topic. Um, because obviously there's still stigma at, at large, and I think in Asia, I, from my experience, maybe more so, um, or actually everywhere, I guess, but um, is it, are they open to this topic, do you think? Is that what you're seeing, or is it still take work to kind of have this work seen? Yeah, um, so thank you for the question, and um, um, they are. Um, to today, uh, acknowledging what is happening, especially post-pandemic, um, they are very open to understanding um, what the artworks are, what we are doing and what um, that's specifically part of the Mindscape project as well, how they initiated uh, something that's quite urgent at this moment and how each of us artists are also showcasing our works um, after being part of this project for close to two years, two, two and a half years, yeah. あの、
森美術館はプライベートな企業のミュージアムなのでその辺に対してはとてもオープンでした他の日本の行政の美術館でできるかと言われるとちょっと私はクエスチョンがわからないなと思いますただ、えー、メンタルヘルスの問題以上に日本ではあの植民地を持った歴史について非常に政治家が語りたがらない向き合おうとしないという歴史がありまして最近私は東京都の、えー、から自分の作品の上映禁止という、えー、命令を受けましたそういうような形で、うん、あまり寛容ではないという感触があります。Uh, I guess, like, you know, let me share my experience in Japan.、Uh, because, as for the Mindscape, you know, exhibition took place in Mori Museum,、uh, which is like privately owned. It's like, you know, owned by you know, big, big business enterprise. So, therefore, like, you know, they are very receptive, open to this kind of idea. But if we are to actually do something similar in more like, you know, government, you know, like owned institutions or like municipality owned institution, that would have been much more difficult. Probably wouldn't have happened. And also, I'd like to mention something aside from mental health. Because, like, you know, Japanese, like during the wartime, you know, I believe there was, like, you know, Japanese, like, colonized, you know,、uh, some other countries. But I guess, you know, the politicians, like, you know, they are so reluctant to talk about it and discuss about it. And so, one of my Artwork was actually banned you know, by the Tokyo Metropolitan Government. So, I guess, you know, so therefore, when it comes to artistic expression in like the certain topics,、uh, Japan is not so open, to be honest. I have to say, from、uh, just an anecdote from Canada,、um, the Musee des Beaux Arts in Montreal.、Uh, There is a registered art therapist that is on staff, and you can, doctors are able to write prescriptions、um, to go to the museum and you can, to, for their own well being. And so you can actually bring your prescription from the doctor and go to the museum.、Um, and the doctor can prescribe that you need to go there、um, for your own mental health、uh, for that week. So, great way to. Take some time off work and do that as well.、Uh, question over here. Yeah,、um, just、uh, this is more directed towards、uh, Cynthia, in that I'm really intrigued by the story that you shared, especially tied to Jung and the Red Book and a lot of the images and other people. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Carl Jung and his Red Book.、Um, It's like Friday. No, no, well, anyway, there is that. But、uh, related to that,、um, there's another guy named Joseph Campbell that has a quote that says, the,、uh, the schizophrenic, the, no, the,、uh, the mystic swims in the same waters that a schizophrenic、uh, drowns in. Wait, wait. The schizophrenic drowns in the same waters that a mystic swims in with delight. And so this whole mental health space, and if you look at art, and if you look at art, Its、origins, you know, from the shaman around the fire to the cave paintings, it's really by these people that have had these experiences, these mystical experiences, that are communicating and trying to express kind of their experiences、um, with art. And arguably, the correlation between kind of mental health,、uh, creativity, and art and, and, and,、um, and mysticism kind of ties in that. And I'm just curious if you guys have any、uh, comments about that. Thank you. Well,、um, I really believe that,、um, you know, because Wesley、well, had no interest in art before he was diagnosed with schizophrenia. And、um, in grade,、uh, he was 15 when he was diagnosed in grade school. He really didn't do art. I was considered the, the artistic one. I remember doing the art homework for him because he didn't do them. And after he was diagnosed and he started painting, he really had. Like, as if a different part of the brain opened up. So, I really、um, think that there is some call of collation, but that, that will be a sci scientific kind of a question.、Uh, but I also understand that a lot of schizophrenic patients, they, they are really good at you know, creating art. So, definitely, I think there's a collation, something about the brain, something about the brain, I think,、um, that, like me, somebody like me, a regular person, might not tap into. ちょっとちょっと付け足してもいいですか
のやっぱりすべての総合失調症の患者さんが絵を描けるわけではないというのは私が付け足さなきゃいけないことかなと思っています。So, I guess, you know, just like, you know, to, from what I observed, you know, all the, you know, people like, who suffer from that, you know,、uh, the, you know, particular disorder, you know, doesn't express, you know, artistic talent. You know, it really depends. I just wanted to, like, you know,、uh, share my observation. Other questions? Catherine? Oh, oh over here.、Mm-hmm. Hi.、Um, so, nowadays, like, mental illnesses. Has been appearing on like a very young age. So,、uh, as for those people, they might not be able to like express themselves through words already. So, how, would, how could we help them as a family member, as a friend, or as a support group or something like that to、uh, help them to expose in art and help them to express、uh, their mental status in art? Yeah. It's a great question. Um, um, I don't know how qualified I am to answer that question, but I,、um, I mean, the, one of the interesting things that、uh, we have found, but, I mean, the fact that I run these, I have two centers that I run, we have people who just walk in and、um, they do not ask for help,、uh, or they just walk in and they would say,、uh, Do you have a glass of water? And we would Um, give them a glass of water, and sometimes I would,、uh, um, you know, there's a table with a lot of crayons and papers and things like that, and I say, Do you want to draw something? Or do you want to, like, you know,、um, read a book? We have a library open. I think、um, what I'm trying to come to is also these spaces,、um, which can help a lot of individuals to kind of express themselves. And、uh, having a visual stimuli、um, can. Be tools to kind of come to understand who they are, maybe, you know. So I think,、um, yeah, like the, you know, the museum that you spoke about, especially the art therapy part, which is quite an interesting、um, initiative by the museum, which I think、um, is very important. So these kind of spaces, I think, can help. Just a suggestion. I think kind of what you're saying is to have an approach of non judgment, right? Totally, yeah. Yeah. So I, I also think being less product oriented or results oriented, or、um, you need to heal in this timeline or whatever, is very important too. Just to be process oriented and say, this space is here for you to make art, whether it's through visual art or through dance or whatever. If you just want to chill, that's okay too, you know? A, a lot of people also are very uncomfortable being. Named or tagged with a certain mental health disorder, you know, so people do not want to go to a doctor or a you know, psychiatrist because there is a certain taboo around it.、Um, and I understand that as well. So I think um, um, easing it in some, whatever way is possible helps. いいですかあの障害者運動の中で有名な言葉に「私たちのことを私たち抜きで決めるな」という言葉があるんですけれども「あ私たちのことを私たち抜きで決めるな」アートに関してもやはりその参加するかしないかはその人が決めることっていうのがとても大事だと思うんですね。So、I think, you know, I just want to add, you know, one more thing.、Uh, because, like, you know, sometimes it's like really common, I guess, you know,、uh, the feedback we hear from, like, you know, disabled community. They said, don't make the decision for us, we, you know, or like, don't make the decision by excluding us, or don't, don't make the decision for us. So, I guess, you know, as for the mental health, as I said, you know, it's really like, you know,、uh, the same thing. Because, like, you know, those who suffer, you know, whether they want to actually participate in this kind of activities or participate, they want to come to this kind of space, that's really up to them in the end. あの、ま、質問された方にそういうなんていうんですかね、強制みたいな気持ちはないかもしれないんですけれども、その良いことだ、アートは良いことだということで、何かしらのその支配のツールとして表現が使われるってことに私はあの気になるところがあります。So, I guess I just want to you know, reply to that one who raised the question, gentleman back there. You know, of course, you know, you meant well. You know, you wanted to like, you know, 
help like younger students exposed to you know be exposed to the art but i guess in the end you know this is like you know in the end that's really up to the individual because like you know art may be a good thing but might not be a good thing for somebody so art should not be like you know self righteous and try not to really force on like you know other people it should be up to that person in the end just w one more thing to add about that um while I was doing uh, some research for this panel, I found out that one in five people globally report having experienced anxiety or depression, and with the majority, 62%, having their first experience before turning 30. So I think that your the point in the question about mental illness and how it affects youth, I think, is particularly important. Uh, next question. Oh. So first, if I make a very brief comment of gratitude, that the way this discussion is framed is using the word mental health and not mental illness, which I suggest is a great leap forward in all of our approaches to the topic. So the question I have is perhaps impossible uh, because representing various cultural contexts do we have a working definition of what is mental health? And for example, I'm thinking, is it self-acceptance? Is it ability to function within the home and society? Or is this really too normative? And as some of the panelists have said, it's a really you know, self-identifying. But what, what, what do you, what is mental health? I think in Mindscapes, this is a conversation that we have quite a bit. And in, in the how to translate the idea of mental health or mental wellness, and even among us, we had a nice discussion about trying to um, stop using terms that are kind of polarizing, but think about mental wellness on a spectrum, and that we all are on the spectrum of falling. Some days things are a little shakier, some days things are a little less shaky. Um, so I think having that approach also will help with destigmatizing. Um, anybody that might have a diagnosis or not? I, I, you know, uh, we were discussing that as well. I don't actually like to use the word illness, I have decided. So yes, maybe the condition because, you know, there is that spectrum when, when it's like what, what is normal, so to speak. I don't think anybody is normal. Uh, everybody will go through the period, so there's that spectrum. And just like Christina said, if on the other end of the spectrum, you are described as having the illness because maybe you need medication. But, you know, we all are in that spectrum. Nobody, nobody is like happy, 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 no problem. <laughs> so um, I think we really, it really is the stigma. I think it's the stigma is causing, uh, well, in Hong Kong, you know, we do, I, I, you know, doing the research also, seeing that really there is a crisis like amongst high school and college students. And 60 some percent will not seek help because of the stigma. So we, that, that, that is really quite alarming. And I, I hope that they understand that it's really not an illness. They need to, you know, because everybody goes through it and really can openly discuss and realizing that it's not something to hide away and not talk about it and have to deal with it themselves. Also to, um, you know, this is uh, to kind of understand our everyday language when people say, are you mad? So that itself is something we're trying to kind of create this, um, taking it so mm -hmm. frivolously, the, this language. So I think it starts like from home, at least, like I know that if my mom says, as I'm like, Amma, don't use it, that word, you know. Yeah. So it also starts from your personal spaces. あの、その心身のトラブルに対して話していくことの恥の感覚っていうものをこうメンタルヘルスという言葉を使うことで壁が少し下がるのではないかなと個人的に思ってます。so I think, you know, there's always a stigma attached to, like, you know, talk about your conditions, like, related to, like, you know, your, like, psychological conditions or physical conditions. But I guess, you know, we are using this word, you know, mental health. That kind of, like, you know, lower the barrier. Like, you know, kind of, like, reduce the degree of the stigma. 
ただ私はそのメンタルヘルスを使う場でもより重い人たちのことをこのあより重い症状を持つ人たちのことを会話から除外しないように気をつけてなるべく話したいと思っています。But of course, you know, the mental health, you know,、uh, the, you know when we use the mental health or when we talk,、uh, you know, talk about the topic, you know, rather than make it too casual, we have to make sure that we also include those people like, you know, who have like, you know, sort of a higher end of the spectrum, meaning、like、who suffer from severe、uh, the, you know, symptoms. I think you know, they need to be also included in the discussion. So we have time for one more question. Uh, thank you、uh, for, for the question. I think the important thing is that you know, I'm living in Hong Kong, but actually I'm、uh, Chinese American. So I exper-、uh, experience both sides of the situation. And、uh, I'm a photographer. So, in, t- in terms of like,、uh, I think that you know, for people,、uh, I suffer from a sort of like a very mild situation of depression. So,、uh, one of the things that I'm thinking of is that basically the art is actually a lifeline. When you cannot speak the language, when you cannot talk about it. So, you use art as a form of expression. And living in Hong Kong for, for so many years,、uh, it's very difficult to express yourself because every time you talk about things, you, it's always about does it have money?、Uh, is it going to be <laughs>、uh, a thing? If it doesn't have it, basically,、um, you have to wait in line maybe for some government situation. In fact, I have a friend who is,、uh, had very severe schizophrenic. But he's very talented in music. He's tr- struggling to get himself out, you know, like express himself, but it's very difficult. So that's the, my, my situation is uh, 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 question is that is there anything in Hong Kong that actually maybe to, to help、uh, some of these people to get out, or is there a, a, an agency so people like that can, can, can contact or maybe have some sort of expression able to,、um, to do that? Actually, when I was Googling mental health in Hong Kong, a, plef,、uh, a website did come up, but right now I don't remember the name of it. So, if you do Google, there is like this、um, platform, or、um, I didn't really look into it very deep, deeply, but I was, I was happy to see that there is such a place in Hong Kong. Such, they, they do have programs. So, maybe, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't remember the, the name of the program or the space. But something, mine, yes. Mine, mine, what's the name? Mine. Something was mine, yes. So, yeah, I think you might be right, yeah. So,、uh, yeah, so that might be a good start. So, I'm happy there is such a, such a place, such a platform for it. So, getting better, I think, Hong Kong. But it's a lot of work still to be done. <laughs> And I think it's this idea of, again, which is, What we talked about a lot in the panel, this idea of, of having a space, and maybe that space is specifically dedicated to mental health, but sometimes it can be a place,、um, you know, like Christine and Dues, where you are, you know, you can be in a library and you can kind of create a program, and that can then be with the focus of improving mental health. Um, and so perhaps we have to all make these kind of spaces for each other.、Um, are there any last kind of comments that anyone would like to say on the panel? Well, just as you were mentioning the library,、mm-hmm. I think libraries are amazing spaces for things of belonging, for places of belonging. And that's only because within the context of the United States, there's so few、um, other public spaces or government run spaces that are so trusted that are throughout communities where anybody can walk in and feel like they belong. They're not going to get kicked out because of who they are.、Um, that is a reflection of how libraries have expanded to serve people in a way that's genuinely serving the public. And,、um, It's great that libraries are doing that, but it also speaks to how so many other spaces could be doing that as well. Any last thoughts? Ah, so this is. 
なんか私はその DV のことをあのプロジェクトをやってみてあの人がこう人をこう傷つける方法っていうのはとても悪い話なんですけどとても普遍的な方法があるんじゃないかなと思ったんですね。だけれどもそこからその回復していくとかそこから逃げるとかそこから休むとかっていう方法は多分その受けた個人それぞれに本当に複雑なバラバラなものがあってでそこにこう文化とかアートがいかに。介入できるかサポートできるかあるいはそのきっかけになれるかっていうところがあの大きな問題じゃないのかなって考えてます。Just a、uh, last remark, you know, because I mentioned about you know, my project, you know,、uh, the theme you know, based on the domestic violence. I mean, it's a sad way to say, but you know, it's true that you know, people can hurt people or like, you know, in so many different ways. But I guess you know,、uh, that when it comes to like, you know, those victim s i d e And they need to recover and they need to escape and they need to rest and take a break from like stressful s i t u a t i o n I guess you know, their like recovery journeys can be you know, quite complicated and like you know, different. But I guess you know,、uh, the, what I thought about was like you know, how actually、uh, the sort of like each culture or like you know, or the art form and can actually intervene in their like recovery or like you know, escape journey. And hopefully, like, you know, how like, you know, art can create, a, you know, provide a support and also like, you know, create a catalyst or the trigger for their recovery. I guess you know, that's what I was just thinking now. I'd like to thank all my panelists、uh, for really a wonderful discussion. Thank you. Thank you, for, thank you to the audience also for joining us for this last talk at Art Basel. And I think talks come to a close. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.